Hey guys, it's Drac, and this is the Nerf Elite Rampage. It's reasonably new, and I'm not going to lie, this blaster is sweet stock. But it is a direct plunger blaster, which means its modified potential is just off the charts. So, this will be the ultimate mod guide for the Nerf Elite Rampage. And without any more talking about it, I'm going to cut, unscrew this thing, and we'll get right into how you modify this to make it sick. Alright guys, so I am trying a slightly new camera angle, we'll see how that works. Uh, this is very similar to the Raider in that you take the five screws that hold the pump action handle on and remove that, it butterflies off. Then you come over here and there are two screws holding the plunger housing in and that comes off. The plunger housing seems to be a non-critical element in this blaster. Now. The blaster itself, and I use Phillips head screws to take out all the screws, and then I like to use a flat head screwdriver to open it up. The blaster itself has all of the screws in this side of the shell, and you can see here that the internals are very different. Now, very is a relative term there. The blaster is different in the there's a huge direct plunger cavity over here and those internals are different and I'm gonna have to remove them entirely it looks like they are still held in with the same sort of running rail and the slam fire mech looks to be the same um, over here I've removed the front piece so that we can get into here and they've done something kinda goofy they have rifled the inside of the the pseudo barrel on the front which still costs you range because it is a air tube that induces barrel drag and I guess the idea is that the rifling makes that less but I don't think that that's a valid point I think that rifling versus non rifling is kind of moot it looks like the receiver here now comes into two halves I don't know if you guys can see it but there is a crack here which is interesting it looks like that comes apart same dart tooth uh, new style air restrictor um, I want to say that the barrel fit is a little bit tighter for these elite darts and then this is what's really interesting it looks like the spring is honestly not all that tough which is a good sign because it means that when it's replaced it'll be much more powerful the plunger is now direct same size relatively uh, held in with this this is actually not part of the plunger tube it is moving when I I prime the blaster if I slide this back it it moves now, I am going to have to dissect this, and I'll get back to you on what I think the best mods to do for this blaster are. The direct plunger system is very, very cool. I look forward to doing a spring replacement and an air restrictor removal. I am looking for some air release holes. This is definitely tapered now that I'm seeing that, which is great because it gives the darts much more push as they leave the barrel. So, I am going to take this apart, and I'll show you the next step in a minute. Alright, so I was planning on jumping straight to the modding segment, but I legitimately could not because I was so blown away by this. All of these pieces, okay, first off, the catch spring is very tough, which is a good sign, and the catch is modeled slightly differently, and looks to be made of a much stronger plastic than the traditional orange. Now, because the catch spring is stronger, it can obviously handle more force, which is excellent for us. This is what blew my mind. This entire piece lifted out of the blaster by itself. It's held in with just pegs. It's all one solid piece designed to house the plunger. But the plunger, which I thought would originally be a serious pain to mod, comes out. The bolt sled is isolated from the priming bar because that piece screws out just like the Raider. Everything looks tighter. This is a much different bolt sled. It's much sturdier. It's much thicker, which means that it's much better for modifications. And obviously it handles all of the, the extra strength in the Retaliator and the this one's the Rampage, but it's the same basic principle, better. Now, because this comes out just like this, it's going to be really easy to get that air restrictor out. In fact, it looks like the air restrictor is held in with four little posts now. The plunger in and of itself will push out through the back. It's going to be an exercise in removing this orange ringed piece, I think, in the back here which looks to be tucked on in a pretty solid way but should not be the end of the world to get on and off past that everything else is solid it looks super easy to get into here and do some work if i want to remove these locks there are pins in the back here i'm pretty sure that if i just poke them both forward they will easily remove the one thing that i don't like that nerf did not fix is that there is still 
a catch here and they've redone it in this sort of way but it should be still easy to remove where it allows the blaster to be half primed and get jammed. Now it hasn't done that yet for me so I will tinker with it and decide if it's necessary. But I wanted to mention that the internals in this are just super simple, make a ton of sense, and I can't wait to get in and see how far we can push them. Alright, so the first mod is a classic. Now, when you're looking at this plunger here, you'll see that there are no air release holes, which again probably lends to why the blaster is so much better than the Raider in the first part, but it did have a an air restrictor. It's actually not a new style air restrictor, it's an entirely different breed. Now I pulled the spring out with needle nose pliers, then I used my trusty utility bit on my Dremel 4000. A few people have been asking me what kind of Dremel I use. It is a Dremel 4000. This is a utility bit, it does exactly what its name would imply in that I used it to drill out the four posts that were holding in the spring. So spring out first because if it gets caught on your utility bit it goes nuts and that's dangerous. After I pulled the spring out, I dapped down with my utility bit all four of the pegs. And then I came in from the front because this is flat. There's no chance of hurting your internals. I put a giant flathead screwdriver in there and then just tapped it through. And the piece came out. It broke in half halfway through. So this is the remainder of my air restrictor. But you can see that that is a perfect straight shot through the barreling. And it'll allow for much better air delivery to the dart. So I'm going to move on to my next modification but that is how you remove the air restrictor. Very clean, very easy. It's almost like Hasbro told us this was a good idea because they made the barrel come apart in a way that it hasn't since like generation 3 night finders. So that was really cool. For the second modification I'm going to be removing this peg right here on the bolt sled. It leads to this situation where sometimes you have a half primed blaster that you can't do anything else with and sometimes you just have to like beat it until the pin gives way and lets you either fully prime or deprime the blaster. So I'm going to remove it. Again I'm just going to use the utility bit because while a sanding wheel or a grinding wheel would be easier, this is already attached and it does mostly the same thing because it is a utility bit. I'm going to turn my speed up to about 20. Sorry for the noise. It's important to note that I am wearing safety glasses right now. I know that you can't see that, which is why I'm telling you. Uh, if you're ever going to use a Dremel, especially at a high speed, you should definitely be wearing safety glasses. So that's what the piece looks like now. I did knock off some of the, the residue plastic because it does melt some of it. And this will no longer half prime as you can see when it's flush. That peg is now completely gone. So this is a definite improvement over a problem that didn't need to exist. Alright guys, the final mod that I'm doing, if you haven't figured it out already, this is either solvent welded, it's melted onto the plastic. So, you will not be able to easily remove this plunger. The good news is, it's well greased already, so there's no real need to Teflon tape this. The seal is pretty awesome stock. Uh, I can do a quick demonstration. So, I want to say that it's got like a 99.9% .9 seal out of the box, which is just insane and really nice. So we're going to take advantage of that and we're not going to do any extra work or boil this to get this off because it's largely unnecessary. I'm sure it won't be long before one of these third party companies will make a spring that's just like this but better, in which case this is entirely unnecessary. But if you're watching this after they've done that and you don't want to spend the money or if you're watching this now and you just want a better rampage, then I suggest doing a spring edition. Now, you can't do anything quite this length because there's only one area in the blaster for a spring this length to catch. And you want something that nests over this because it's perfectly fitted to the plunger tube. So I wound up going with this. Now this I think is from a splat and it's reasonably tough. It's not a, a bad spring, it's not a super heavy spring, but it will give this a little bit of extra punch, which is good because we want to take advantage of the fact that we've knocked out the air restrictor. Now, this locks into this groove here, so it has almost a secondary spring rest, which is just excellent. It also nests inside 
the stock spring without interfering. You can see that's a very loose fit, which is great. And it fits inside the plunger tube and it does one other thing, which is it doesn't interfere with the catch mechanism. Now because it does all of these things, it is a perfect candidate for this mod. And I'm just going to throw it in, align it with this rest when I put the blaster back together. I don't think I need to do anything else to just get some awesome performance out of this. So the simple fact of the matter is you line this up correctly, put it back together, and tease it into your blaster shell. Now, just as I suspected, this piece here, you've got to push down the tooth there. This piece here is entirely... I haven't done anything to it, it naturally comes apart into two halves like this. This is an awesome thing, it makes it a whole lot easier to get all the parts back together. So it was worth mentioning. Without any further ado, I'm going to kill the camera, put the blaster back together with all three of these mods intact, and I will show you what we're looking at when we're done. I don't even think the jam door is a necessary removal anymore because the blaster primes really smoothly and I think that it'll be really easy to clear any jams. Quick note, when you're putting your blaster back together, make sure you actually include the dart holding piece that goes in the handle. This is actually the second time that I'm putting mine together because I left out that piece. And while it's not essential, it was driving me crazy. I guess nobody's perfect. Alright, hey guys, this is the finished rampage. I decided that it really needed something where the CS used to go, so I did put the fang signature up there. Nothing on the handle this time. And... It does definitely have noticeable improvements after my modifications. Now, my favorite of which is, and it's difficult to see, but hopefully you can, this is where the darts chamber organically most of the time. With that air restrictor and dart post knocked out, you can push them further down the barrel, which is of course more barrel length, actual barrel length, not fake barrel length, and it allows you to get more force behind the darts. And when I fire, at that, I'm getting like 75 feet flat, which is what the blaster is supposed to do. I'm very pleased that it does that now. I am going to put a bunch of darts in the drum and fire them off. For those of you that are curious, I think that with a little bit of an angle, like the sort of angle that I would be using in HVZ, I think that it had hit about 85 to 90 now, so there's some serious improvements. I've got a red dart from Target, a glow-in-the-dark dart from the Raven, a regular dart, and then I believe five elite darts behind them. So, we will go through the clip. And the accuracy is still spot on. I think that that's, again, a tribute to the elite darts and the force of the direct plunger. So I don't think that I did anything that impacted that one way or the other. I will try and slam fire off these last three darts. I'm going to check real quick and make sure I actually have three darts before I slam fire it. I have four, so slam firing three should be safe. With the air restrictor gone, I don't want to dry fire the blaster, which is why I checked. And again, the accuracy suffers a little bit with the slam fire mechanism, but the ranges are just as good, if not a little bit better, which is very strange. Okay, and there's one dart left. So that's pretty much it. That's how I modified my Nerf Elite Rampage, and I think that that's how you should too. Uh, thanks for watching my mod guide.